Hello, I'm Angela from Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan. I am the program and event specialist for the Jackson and Kalamazoo regions. And I am back to do a couple more steps of the Brownie Painter Badge. And we are going to focus on painting with our emotions and we are gonna paint a little bit with alternative things other than the paintbrush. That is step three and four. So, I hope that you will make sure that you have some of the things that you need, which I go over many times during the video, but I wanna make sure you remember, you need something if you're gonna paint to cover your surface of your table. It could be a newspaper, it could be general paper, it could be a tablecloth like the one I have here. It could be anything that you can paint on and isn't gonna damage the surface you're working on. I highly recommend wearing something you don't care about getting paint on. Um, I always try to wear an apron that will cover my clothes, even if it's clothing I don't care about. Um, you need some watercolor. Right here I have some. I'm using tray watercolor. You can use liquid watercolor. You can take your acrylics that you used in step one and water them down and use them like watercolor because watercolor is supposed to be transparent. Um, also, you could even have the liquid watercolor in a palette and use it that way. There's lots of options. Um, you also need paint brushes for step one. You're gonna need uh, paint brushes. Yes, yes, paint brushes. Really, you just need one like this. Round brush will work, nothing fancy. Um, you need a water cup, of course. Water, um, paper towels. Uh, let's see, there's just so many things. Oh, an eraser. Oh, permanent marker. Definitely have to have a permanent marker for this. Um, a straight edge of some kind. So I found a little ruler, um, but it, any straight edge would work. Honestly, I could have used the edge of this dry palette. Um, let's see, there's just so many supplies when you do art that are helpful. Oh, four step. Three for painting uh, with non-traditional painting uh, tools. You are gonna want to use acrylic paint for that. So craft acrylics. Oh, oh my goodness! In your primary colors, in your primary colors. Oh my goodness, man! I cannot pick up these paints. Red, blue, and yellow, and of course your black and your white. And you're gonna want. Maybe some baby wipes if you're lucky and have these as an option because they are great if you spill acrylic paint for cleaning it up or drying off your surface when you overpaint onto your tablecloth or whatever's protecting your surface. Um, as far as alternative things to paint with, we'll talk more about that in the video, but I'm just gonna give you a quick um, rundown. You probably will definitely find Q-tips a lot of fun to play with, uh, cotton balls, um, any type of um, plant get permission and find out what the plant is before you cut from it or take something from it um, but uh, plant can be used leaves a flower a stem a stick um, grass um, I also have a fork that I think I grabbed I kind of just went around my house and looked for things that I could use that might create different textures on my paper. So that's another thing that you're gonna to need to do this, is um, some alternative things to a paintbrush. Um, although a paintbrush does help with that uh, application. So of course we'll need it for one part, we're gonna need paintbrushes, but it can always help when we're playing with alternative things to paintbrushes. Uh, yeah, oh my goodness, we also need paper. <laughs> so my big spiel about paper. Watercolor is what you want for this. You really want some sort of heavier tooth paper that's thicker, that has a little bit of absorbency to it because we are going to use watercolor and it will handle it a little better. You might want a mixed media paper, which is a little thinner for one part and then watercolor for the second part. Um, the emotion chart um, is easier to fold a uh, thinner mixed media style paper versus the heavier watercolor paper I'm working with. 
um, when we do our final emotion piece. Uh, but you know what? If you want to paint and use uh, wired down acrylics, you can grab recyclables out of the recycling bin and paint over that cardboard like we did in step one of the brine paint bridge and made ourselves a canvas for our landscape. Um, most watercolor doesn't stick real well into the acrylic surface, so you really want to work with acrylic on acrylic if you do that. Um, but also, I mean, in the end, you can always grab paper from your copy machine or printer at home. That's fine. Just know that it is going to wrinkle a lot and it might rip if it absorbs too much moisture. But it is always an option. So for this, we're going to need some paper. Uh, in specific, uh, a thinner paper uh, that's still absorbent and a watercolor heavier paper. Uh, that watercolor, you're going to need two sheets of that. The mixed media paper, you'll need one sheet of that or, you know, whatever you end up working with works, but in the end we'll need three sheets of paper. All right, that pretty much covers our supplies for these activities. So first, since we are going to focus on emotion and painting, I wanted to talk a little bit about one of my absolute favorite art movements, Fauvism. It was the first 20th century movement in modern art and it was inspired by you know those very famous uh impressionists like M monet and later the post-impressionists like vincent van gogh who we looked at in the first steps of the painting brownie painting badge and um the fauves actually what the word favis means is wild beast <laughs> it's quite a crazy descriptive term but the reason they were called wild beasts is because they were wild with color they didn't look at things the same way the realism starts to get more and more as we head into the modern art world um, more and more abstract and less realistic so they're the Favis really were doing some realism in their painting, but it was definitely not what you saw with the naked eye, especially when it came to color. Um, those colors were purely wild and emotional, and that was kind of the idea. Um, they used color as a vehicle for describing light and space and basically redefined pure color and form as a means of communicating the artist's emotional state at the time of the painting. So there's that emotion coming out in the artwork. And it's one of the reasons it's my favorite because I just love color. And the fact that color can be representative of so many things. And of course, really, this is a good moment to point out, color is one of those very important elements of art. So keep that in the back of your head because we're going to use it that element again to make some artwork in a little bit. So the Favis were headed up by a artist called Henri Matisse. They were a loose collection of artists, but the most famous for sure was Henri Matisse. Um, he painted some pretty famous paintings and let me pull some of them out. So, um, this is one of my favorites. So right here, look at all of the colors in this. It's very much about showing brush strokes and the walls seem to change color. And you've got pinks in there in places. I'm pretty sure pinks weren't really there. And I just feel like it must have been a warm and invitingly calm day. And so that sort of expressed in the colors in the picture. Another uh, Henri Matisse. Ironically, this one has a lot of pink in it too. I must be a little bit attracted to some of his pink paintings. Or maybe it's just the warmth and, and uh, maybe a little bit of that summer agitation of the heat and the sun bouncing off of surfaces um, that made him use pink and reds in this painting a lot. Uh, but definitely 
I don't think the field was actually this red. Um, I'm gonna bet this is pretty much a colorful interpretation of what he was feeling when he looked at it, not necessarily the color of what was there on the ground. Um, I'm pretty sure the mountains back here were probably not pink, um, but in his head, in the feelings he was having looking at it, that's what it translated in his mind to onto the paper or onto the canvas. Um, Ah, uh, here's a good one. Very, very famous portrait he did in this um, colorful Favis style. And you can see she's got a lot of different colors in face. In fact, the shading on her nose is green. It's like a greenish blue. And there's oranges and yellows on her neck. And just colors that we wouldn't necessarily um, expect to be there. But when he was looking at her face, these are the colors that he thought of and connected to the emotions he was feeling as he was painting. So you can see definitely not necessarily what colors were actually there as he was looking at his subject. Um, another really um, uh, famous artist is Andre, I'm gonna say it wrong, Daria, oh yeah, Daria, I believe is how you say it, Andre Daria. He did the same thing. If you look, you know, the tops of his trees are red and the bottom of his trunks are blue. And um, when you think of a tree, do you think of a tree that's red and blue like that? Probably not something we see in real life. But those were the colors that were evoking to him as he looked at his subject matter when he was painting. And so you see in this landscape, pretty much hardly any of the colors you would traditionally see in an outside landscape, like greens and browns and blues and the sky. In fact, the sky isn't really all that blue. The tree here is like the tree canopy back here, but not the sky. So it's definitely an art form that is not about being super real. It's definitely attached to the emotion and the colors these artists were feeling represented what they were looking at emotionally. Oh, here's another good one. I really like the fact the road on this. So this is also done in this style. Look at the road's kind of a greenish color. All of the vehicles are blue. Over here, the ground is all bright yellow. I don't know if that is water. Possibly, it. yeah, it looks like it is. There's a bridge up here. That's always one of the challenges. So there's the bridge and then the skyline is blue. So the water is yellow. It's not something we usually think of, but his sky is yellow and so that reflecting down to the water. So I think this was a very sunny day. That's what I feel. When I look at it, it was a happy, joyful, warm green day. Um, but I don't know if that's the case, but these were the colors that were evoked by what he was looking at and interpreting the emotion he was feeling at the time, looking at those things that he was trying to portray in the painting. So I really wanted to talk about Valvism because it is really using color and connecting it to emotion and putting it in your artwork. Um, the next artist we're going to talk about is an abstract artist. An abstract means in art, something that is not representational of something in the real world. So if it was supposed to be a house, it won't really look like a house. It might have a sense of a house, but it's gonna be mostly color or line or shape, but it definitely will not immediately say house. So abstract art is definitely not something that's a concrete concept that you would look at it and know right away what it is. Uh, Kandinsky is, Vasily Kandinsky is probably the most famous of the abstract artists. He was a Russian artist who used abstraction as a path to what he thought would bring him spiritual enlightenment. Um, he felt that it was going to make him a better within himself and have better understanding of the world and art and um, even possibly bring that forth to the viewer of his artwork. Um, he once said he was the most interested in what the spectator lives or feels while under the effect of the form and color combinations of the picture. So he definitely was really all about eliciting pure emotion out of the viewer. 
And that is a pretty amazing thing for someone of his time in the early 20th century to be doing. He basically was um, following up from Impressionism and then we move into Post-Impressionism and then we move into um, more and more abstraction. All of this is very much influenced by the uh, photography and technology that's come out because suddenly uh, painters don't want it to be 100% realistic. Uh, how do you differentiate yourself from photography technology? Well, you show your art history and what you're using to make your picture like your paint strokes are actually visible in impressionistic paintings that's one of the first times we really see that post impressionism they get more and more and more and more all about light and diffusion of sharpness and textural type displays and eventually we move into breaking it down, breaking it down, and breaking it down until eventually it is shapes and lines and colors that are the painting that artists are trying to create. And uh, I have right here, here's a Kandinsky right here. And let's see if I can get it to, oh, there we go. So as you can see, it's line and color and shape all about movement but really in that it's really up to determine to the viewer what you might get out of it not necessarily some realistic thing in the world that we can see immediately and understand it is definitely an abstract piece and the colors and the shapes and lines can probably be translated into some sort of reactive feeling uh, maybe looking at it, you feel a little agitated by the movement of the lines or a little uh, sad or angry based on all the red in the picture and the dark black blotches that are moving through the picture. So there's definitely some ways to see in a painting, in an abstract painting, how an artist might view emotion using color and line. Now, here's another one. Has a very, very different feel. This one definitely is not quite as fluid and there isn't as much agitation. Uh, I kind of look at this and I feel like there's some happiness going on here and peacefulness. And even that little bit of red makes me think passion, not necessarily anger. Um, that yellow, the squares, there's just not nearly as much movement, more of a sense of stayedness or wish to be kind of stable in this one. Uh, but there is definitely a diversity of color in this that is very striking. So you have two of his paintings here as examples. and. Today, the type of art we're gonna make to show emotion is going to be an abstract type art work. Uh, a little bit inspired by Kandinsky, but also maybe even a little of the Favis that we talked about first, um, especially using color. So at this point, I want you to find your piece of paper you're gonna be making your art on you're gonna need two pieces of paper, uh, some heavier paper so that you can paint on it, of course. So either go fish out of your recycling bin, some cardboard that you can paint over anything you don't want in the background. Uh, let's see, or um, even a piece of paper from a printer, although that's gonna be very thin and get wrinkly. Now, you're also going to need some other important supplies. They just come with the painting territory besides the paper you're gonna paint on. And that is something to put water in right here. Paint brushes, as you can see, paint brushes. 
you're gonna need uh, paint is a very important ingredient, right? So for the first part of this, we are going to use watercolor. This is my watercolor tray. Any watercolor tray will work, don't worry. It's not important if it's the liquid watercolor that you need a palette for versus a uh, tray like this with cake watercolor. None of that is an issue. Any kind will work. Honestly, you can use watercolor pencils. Um, I think they even make watercolor crayons, but watercolor is the easiest for this. It's um, very doable. Also, if you don't have any of that, I just thought of it. Acrylic paint watered down will work the same way. So if you have that as well, please go for it. Now, we have our paint. We have our paint brushes. We have our water cup. We have water. We need paper towels so we can clean up any messes or spills um, and to block our paintbrush and clean it between colors we need oh pencil and for this part we need some sort of permanent marker uh, black particularly and Let's see, I think that might be it. The section doesn't have a lot to it. So, I have my piece of paper. And what we're gonna do is an emotion chart. So right here is my emotion chart. And you can see I put lines in it that I thought represented different types of emotion. So, uh, this'll be helpful when you're going to make your artwork, to have something to reference for different types of lines and different colors you associate with an emotion. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take our white piece of paper and we're going to travel our left side and it's going to meet with our right side. Oh, look at that, they match. And we are gonna fold it. Okay, see, met half. We are now in half. Guess what? Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna travel our right side over to our left side, and we're gonna fold the edge, and we're gonna go whoosh, and whoosh. Ooh, I didn't do that one very well, whoosh. Okay, now, we're gonna travel from the right side to meet at the left side, and we're gonna squish, 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 squish. Open, close, because that is a bit thicker. This was a little harder. Whoosh, whoosh again. And now I'm unfolding it this time because this will be easier. And we're gonna make this travel to the left side. And we're going to pinch, 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 pinch. And we're going to go whoosh. And we're going to go whoosh. And when you open it up, you should see boxes. And look at that. Boxes, boxes. Okay. So now we have our boxes. Now that we have our boxes, the big thing we need is something, oh, I forgot, a straight edge. We need a ruler or something that is straight. So I actually struggled in my house to find a ruler. And so as long as it's got an edge you can trace on, you can use that. So the only ruler I found in my house was this tiny little ruler right here, but it'll work. Uh, if you look around your house, something, well, actually, even something like my watercolor box here would work as a straight edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw our lines in for our boxes. So, 
We've made the lines for our boxes. You see, I didn't go all the way up to the top, and if you didn't notice, I was tracing on those fold lines, but I left this completely opened up here. I didn't go all the way up. I am going to put a line here, and then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over it with my permanent marker in black. So now we've created our boxes using pencil and a straight edge and then going over it with a straight edge and a black marker. And we've left the blank spot up here for our title of our work and that is emotion. It is the definition of emotion. So on my very stylized version here up here at the top, I wrote emotion. And the definition, a natural reaction to something you see, hear, remember, or do. So an emotion is a reaction to something you hear, see, remember, or do. Also called a feeling. So when you think of feelings, what are some of the feelings you think of? This is a good time to make a list or share that with someone. What kind of feelings do we have? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put one of those feelings in each one of these boxes here. So you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna write it in, that feeling, into each box. These feelings are your choice. I do have some examples here, obviously but you can make up your own. Now, I'm going to start filling mine out with the feelings that I'm thinking of. Like, I definitely have to put happy in here because right now I'm super happy because I'm making a video on abstract painting and painting with your emotions. So, happy is definitely going on my grid. Now, I have filled in all my boxes with words. Notice I kept them up to the top and I should have pointed that out earlier. Uh, I left space below my words and I wrote the word emotion real big this time and the definition next to it a bit smaller. Uh, but I think you should all use your own personal technique to write emotion and its definition, a natural reaction to something you see, remember, hear, or do. Also called a feeling. So the next thing we're gonna do is go over it with the black marker. So we're gonna go over our pencil. We're gonna trace that pencil lines and cover up the pencil with something darker and more permanent than pencil. So get that marker out and we'll get started. So now you can see I have written everything in black and covered up the pencil. And then I went over it, if you didn't notice, with the eraser and erased the extra pencil marks because obviously I didn't straightforward uh, write the words exactly as I did in pencil. I adjusted them a little as I traced over them. So definitely take that eraser and erase your extra pencil marks. And now for the fun part. So under each one of these words, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take a line, like as in this one right here. You can see, oh yep, definitely can see the uh, lines. So some are squiggles, figure eights, uh, curves, 
angles, jagged lines, squares, anything um, that this wonderful, wonderful element of art called the line can be made into. And I picked one to represent each one of these emotions. So the next part we're gonna do is you're gonna pick one and draw a couple examples of that style of line under each one of your emotions that you think represents that emotion for you. So you're gonna grab your blank paper and you're gonna start drawing. So get that pencil out and then we will get underway. We have all of our lines drawn in, so we have achieved our emotion lines and celebrated that important element of art, the line. Now, we are going to go over our lines with what, let me hear you, permanent marker again. So you're gonna get that black marker out. We're gonna go over our lines and then guess what we get to do next? I bet you know. Yep, that's it. We get to use another element of art, it's color. But before we get there, we gotta cover up this pencil with our black marker. Okay, now we've got everything outlined. So everything is black, it's outlined. I have taken an eraser again and gotten all the pencil off of it. Hopefully you noticed that after I finished covering all of my lines with the black marker. And I even fixed a little up here I missed. So definitely erasers are wonderful tools, just like pencils. Erasers, that make thing that makes that pencil temporary. So now it is painting time. So we're gonna look at color now. Color being one of those important elements of art, just like line. And for this part, we want to associate a color to these emotions. So I, in my example here, have done that. I have associated a color to each one of these emotions. So. You're, this is the point where you're gonna wanna get out your paint, make sure you have your water cup and your water and your paper towels and your paintbrush and your, well, most importantly, something to protect the surface of your table or whatever you're working on and something to protect your clothing like my apron I'm wearing here. So this is the time when you get all that out, get that set up if you haven't already done so and we are going to paint our emotions the color we think represents them best. Okay, we have now finished our emotion chart and connected our emotions to line shapes and color choices. Hopefully your emotions that you have listed are personal to you and your shapes of your lines and your color choices don't necessarily match mine because we're all individuals and how we feel and what we connect to as far as color goes is different per individual. Plus you might have different paint than me. So this is done. I want us to put it aside where we can see it uh, but it also needs to dry at this point. Mine is still pretty damp. I'm sure yours is as well. So we're gonna put this over here. I have an easel I'm going to lean it on. And at this point, it is time 
to get ready to make some actual abstract emotion art inspired by the chart we just made. So I want you to think back to that guy, that Vasily Kadinsky guy who did all those abstract paintings with lines and color. That's kind of what we're gonna do now, except we're gonna have a little fun and channel our inner two, three-year-old a little bit too with some controlled scribbling. So the first thing you're gonna need is your pencil and your paper. Preferably that heavier watercolor paper, but any paper will do, as I've said before. You just need some paper. All right, I am ready to go. I've got my watercolor paper and my pencil. And we are going to start making our abstract art that is reminiscent of that Vasily Kadinsky artwork. So I just wanted to remind you of a bit of his work. Here's one of the ones we looked at. And here's another one of the pieces that we looked at earlier. And I think that you will have a lot of fun making your own version of this artwork. This is my example. And when I was making it, I was thinking a lot about being happy and feeling happy and joyful. And I always say joyful with yellow and happiness with the baby blue here. And happiness was curved lines and joyfulness is like bumpy lines and yeah, here you go. Bumpy lines, happiness is curved lines, light blue, yellow. And then there's a little bit of that sadness in there with this darker blue. Because right now we're all stuck doing things very differently than we used to do and I kind of miss some of my normal life. So I, I have a little of that mixed in because even though right now I'm making art and I'm always joyful when I'm making art and happy, um, that's still in the back of my mind that things are just not what they normally would be and I kind of miss some of those things. In fact, I actually painted the background black and if you look at my emotion chart, my emotion chart, that was fear. But if you'll notice, there's no real jagged lines here. And I thought that was a good way because some of the stuff that's going on is kind of a little bit scary. But if we're doing all the right things, it's something that's kept in the background and it's making all the good stuff pop out. And if you look at this, it's very happy and joyful. And so I made the black in the background because all of the good stuff is popping out in my life and um, is overcoming some of those scary things. So the black is in the background. Also, one of the really cool things about black is it really does make those dominant colors pop, those bright colors pop out. And so uh, that was another reason I chose black. Now. You could have made this white, you could have left it be, you could have made it any color you wanted it, but I, I chose black. Now, today, I think I'm going to choose some different shapes and designs, like surprise. I think um, things have been very surprising lately. I've had a lot of fun and interesting things happen, even though I'm not doing things my normal way. And at the same time, it's been a bit lonely. So I think maybe this line, because I am by myself a whole lot. It is just me and my husband. And when he is not here, it is just me and my three dogs. So I think that is definitely something right now I am feeling a lot. So I think loneliness and surprise are gonna be the two. And I think those are the two I'm going to go with. So maybe something will also take over while I'm drawing and I'll be surprised and there'll be a line in there I didn't expect and that's very possible because really what you're doing, going to be doing is drawing with your pencil continuously, not lifting it much from the paper and creating sort of a, oh, a bit of a scribble. So honestly, channel that inner three-year-old and two-year-old and embrace it. And we're gonna take those lines that we've chosen. So you choose yours off of your emotion chart and 
we will get started on our art project. So now I have achieved my piece here. I have put my lines in. You can see my surprise scribbles, I think, a bit. You can see my loneliness lines. So now the next thing to do is to go through and with your permanent marker, you're gonna go over your lines, whatever your permanent marker is. So remember, take that black marker and we're gonna outline it. Ooh. So now I have outlined my my feeling abstract piece and you can really see the pattern. Now the goal now is let me see if I can grab my example from earlier for you. If you look at this, you'll notice that there's a dark blue here and there's a lighter blue and then the middle blue. So what I did was I made sure that when I filled in the shapes, I did not have the same color touching for the most part. Obviously there's a tiny bit of middle blue here, shade of blue, touching this blue, but for the most part it's light blue, light blue, dark blue, or medium blue, medium blue. Um, honestly, I probably should have made that yellow now that I'm looking at it, but it's okay. Um, so the idea is there is two shades of yellow in, actually there's three, sh no two shades two shades of yellow. If you look, this is much darker than this one. It's pretty subtle, but there are two shades. So I'm trying to make sure I don't touch those two yellows together. Um, it's sort of hard to tell at points because it's watercolor. And so the thicker it's on and the lighter it's on depends on how it transposes onto the paper. So. Um, some, some spots like this right here, this yellow looks pretty much like this yellow. If you saw it in person, it is actually slightly different. It's just that I must have applied this with a little less pigment with this dark color than I did with this one, which was lighter and I put a lot more pigment on the paper. So you got to play with it. But for the most part, I'm trying not to touch uh, the same color on any edge. So this piece does not have, this little blue here does not have the same color blue anywhere around it. And that's the idea, as best you can. So for my piece here, if I painted, let's say this big space here, which I probably paint orange, some shade of orange, okay. I would then want to not paint this orange or that orange or this orange, which is actually really big because it goes up and around here. Of course, you got to use your judgment. And of course, you want to change the shades of your colors, which means you either add a little darkness to it or a little lightness to it. And my palette for some colors have a lot of options and some don't have very many. So say I really only have one real orange in here, but that doesn't mean I can't mix some different orange shades on my palette, which is what I'm gonna do for my orange. Um, and that way I have some variations in the color. Same with my um, grays. So my loneliness is gray. So. There's a dark gray and a light gray. I might even use a little of the black just because. Um, it's a darker version of gray. 
because gray is just black mixed with white. So um, we're gonna try to play off those two colors. And then we'll see what I wanna do around my outside with this one, because it's very different than this one as far as my color choices go. So uh, black is part, or that black or gray is part of my artwork in here. So I'm probably not gonna wanna put that around the outside of my piece. Um, we may pick something like blue to go on the outside. Um, maybe think about the opposites on the color wheel, which for orange, that's blue. Um, green, that's red. And for yellow, that's purple. So we definitely will get some pop if you use the opposites on the color wheel from say what's in your artwork. So I think I'm ready to paint, how about you? So it's time to crack out that paintbrush and your paper towels and your watercolor and let's get some color on our paper. So we've finished our emotion painting. Nice and abstract, full of lines that represent those feelings and colors of different shades. And we've created quite a nice abstract piece of art personal to you and how you're feeling at this moment. Of course, yours will not look like mine because we're very different people and we feel very different things. And one of the great things about making art, actually as simple as coloring in a coloring book, is that it's considered, based on studies, to be one of the most distressing activities you can do because when you're making something like painting a picture or drawing or coloring, you are not able to focus on anything else but what you're accomplishing in your artwork and thus relieving your mind from anything that has been weighing it down or making you feel stressed. So art is definitely a great way to do that. And look at this, all these emotions have brought out some pretty cool images. I mean, these are very different pieces, but they came and they came from very different emotions. But they're a pretty cool outcome of the way I was feeling at the time. So don't be afraid to get in there, use a little of that line and a little of that color and express how you're feeling. Okay, so we're gonna start step number four now that we've completed our emotion paintings. And step number four is painting with tools other than a paintbrush. And I have to say, this is kind of fun and experimental. This is another one when you're feeling stressed out, this can be pretty fun because there is no real necessarily beginning or end. It's playing with paint and playing with the objects you're using to paint with. And it tends to be abstract like the paintings we just did. And it can be really about picking those colors and applying them to the paper and seeing how things leave an imprint on the paper, things like that. So it's really a lot of experimenting and you never know what you're gonna get. Some things will leave better marks than others. So I would like to say if you have not gone out and get gotten your acrylic paint yet and your uh, water needs to be changed in your water cup, this is the time to do it. I would also go around and look for some of those things that are non-traditional items that you're allowed to get paint on and um, bring those back and then we will get started just playing with our paint and our objects. Now, I think you're probably back and I have some Q-tips, cotton balls, some flat cottony things, uh, probably to clean your face with or clean a wound with. Uh, I have some leaves. I 
have a bamboo skewer. Old fork, excuse me. A lid to a bottle. Oh, I also have a dried out baby wipe. I mean, literally anything can be used for this. Uh, I highly recommend going out in your yard and grabbing some pieces of plant. I have some other plants around here. I might grab some things from too as well. Like say, I have some parsley right here. I think we'll try parsley. I think that will be fun. Um, so basically what you're gonna do is you're going to mix your paint colors and your palette, which you definitely need a palette for this and something to put that paint on. So I am gonna get started and I'm just gonna have some free fun here. Let out some of the emotions I'm feeling and play with the objects and the paint and putting them on the paper. That is the goal. So I've completed my abstract painting from non-traditional materials. I'm sure you've had fun trying the things you found around your house or in your yard that were not paintbrushes to apply paint to a piece of watercolor paper or any other paper that you have around the house and experimented and found some things that you really liked that worked and some things that didn't. I thought the leaves were a little difficult to work with. They didn't do anything I thought really worked for me. Uh, but something I really loved was uh, my dried out uh, baby wipe, especially when I got it wet there at the end and I was able to uh, spread a thin coat of paint across the whole paper. I think it definitely did something really cool. I loved how the fork scraped into the layers of paint and reveals some of the paint underneath, which I'm not sure you can see real well unless I get really close. See that? So now you can see the rainbow of colors underneath and created some texture. So I definitely found some things I really liked and some things I didn't like. But I found this to be very relaxing and I hope you did too and kind of fun to experiment and you never know what you're gonna get when you're trying things that are outside the box. So I highly recommend making sure that you know it's something you can use, but try many, many different things that you come across to paint with. You never know what you'll find that you enjoy. Thank you for joining us here at Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan for steps three and four of the Brownie Painting Reg. I'm so glad you joined us today and I hope you enjoyed looking at our emotions through line and color and releasing a little bit of that freedom and emotion through painting with um, non-traditional tools. And of course, I hope that you would post your glorious artworks down below in the comments. And of course, um, please, please join us for many more of these wonderful virtual videos. And if you are looking for the painter badge, you can always get that through Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan in our shops. Please give your local regional center a call and they will help you out. Again, please join us in the future for more virtual videos and I look forward to sharing a little more art and a little more of my expertise with you in the future. Thanks, bye.